inguinal canal. Let's take a closer look at the superficial inguinal ring, an important anatomical landmark in the groin region. The superficial inguinal ring is the medial opening of the inguinal canal. Think of it as a small triangular or V-shaped gap in the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle. Through this opening, important structures like the spermatic cord or round ligament pass out of the inguinal canal. Now let's understand its boundaries more clearly. The sides of this opening are formed by two bands of the external oblique aponeurosis called the crura. The lateral cruise attaches to the pubic tubercle. The medial cruise inserts onto the pubic crest. Together, they frame the superficial inguinal ring. Moving on to its boundaries and relations. Medially, it is bordered by the inferolateral edge of the rectus abdominis muscle. Laterally, it is close to the inferior epigastric vessels. Inferiorly, it relates to the medial third of the inguinal ligament. Now let's look at the structures passing through. On the left side, you can see the spermatic cord covered by the external spermatic fascia. On the right side, this external spermatic fascia has been removed, which allows us to see the cremasteric fascia and the ilioinguinal nerve more clearly. Finally, below this region, you can also appreciate the fascia lata of the thigh and the terminal part of the great saphenous vein, which is an important venous landmark draining into the femoral vein. On the left side, the external oblique aponeurosis has been removed. By doing this, we can clearly see the internal oblique abdominis muscle lying underneath. This muscle forms an important part of the roof of the inguinal canal. Just beneath the internal oblique, we can observe the cremaster muscle, which is actually derived from fibers of the internal oblique. This thin muscle layer plays a role in elevating the testis and regulating its temperature. Running alongside, you can also see the ilioinguinal nerve. This is a small sensory nerve that travels through part of the inguinal canal and supplies sensation to the upper medial thigh and external genital region. Notice that on both the right and left sides, the cremaster muscle and the ilioinguinal nerve are clearly shown deep to the internal oblique. Now students, let's go even deeper into the anatomy of the inguinal canal and the spermatic cord. First, let's look at the floor of the inguinal canal. This is formed by the inguinal ligament, which stretches from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. Think of it as a strong band at the base of the canal providing support. If we dissect further and lift the layers above, we find the transversus abdominis muscle. Along with the internal oblique, this muscle forms part of the roof of the inguinal canal, giving it structural strength from above. Now in this image, you'll notice that the spermatic cord has been cut open so that we can examine its layers and contents more clearly. Let's start with the layers of the spermatic cord, moving from the outside inwards. External spermatic fascia. This outer covering comes from the external oblique aponeurosis. Cremasteric fascia with the cremaster muscle. This middle layer arises from the internal oblique muscle and its aponeurosis. This muscle helps lift the testis when needed. Internal spermatic fascia, the innermost covering derived from the transversalis fascia. Now let's focus on the contents of the spermatic cord. Inside it runs several important structures, the ductus deferens, which carries sperm from the testis to the ejaculatory ducts. The artery of the ductus deferens arising from the superior vesicle artery, the testicular artery, which comes directly from the abdominal aorta to supply the testis, the cremasteric artery, branching from the inferior epigastric artery, supplying the cremaster muscle. 
the pampiniform plexus of veins, which is a network of veins that cools arterial blood before it reaches the testis and drains into the testicular vein. And finally, the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve, which provides motor supply to the cremaster muscle and some sensory innervation. Now let's look at the superior view of the male pelvis to understand how structures enter the deep inguinal ring. In this image, you can clearly see the testicular vessels and the ductus deferens approaching the deep inguinal ring. These structures pass from the abdominal cavity into the inguinal canal through this opening. Focus on the left anterior aspect. Here, the deep inguinal ring is related to the cut ends of the inferior epigastric vessels on its medial side. This relationship is important because these vessels form a key landmark. Clinically, surgeons use them to distinguish between direct and indirect inguinal hernias. Moving further medially, you can identify the lacunar ligament. Now let's shift our attention to the anterior view of the female inguinal region. This view helps us understand how the structures differ slightly from those in the male. On the right side of this image, you can clearly see the superficial inguinal ring and its contents. In females, instead of the spermatic cord, we find the round ligament of the uterus passing through this ring. Alongside it runs the ilioinguinal nerve, which provides sensory innervation to parts of the thigh and external genital region. On the left side, the internal oblique abdominis muscle is exposed. You can see how it continues downward as the foul inguinalis, also called the conjoint tendon, which is formed by the fusion of the internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscles. This conjoint tendon provides reinforcement to the posterior wall of the inguinal canal, especially on the medial side,